What up, you guys? I am back to do a follow-up video on my video the other day. Um, as to be expected, I guess, it caused a bit of a firestorm um, with a lot of people. Um, and so I wanted to take this opportunity to kind of clear the air and um, kind of address some of the things that I've seen so that we can finally move forward. Um, this channel was really intended to be uh, used as a vehicle to deliver updates and news to, you know, anyone and everyone. Um, when the regulations first came out, Chris and I were part of the conference call that sort of broke down the regulations, gave everybody an idea of, you know, what all of this like crazy legal speak meant. Um, and a lot of people, you know, after that started coming to us asking us for, you know, news and, and kind of a breakdown of, of, you know, what was happening, what it all meant, what we can expect and that sort of a thing. Um, obviously, because it is my blog, I'm going to at times, you know, put my interpretation and my opinion on the things that I feel strongly about. Um, and, and this whole issue with fair cloth is certainly no exception. It's something that has um, affected me personally um, and brought out a lot of, you know, mixed emotions. And so um, I, I certainly didn't <laughs> hold back in my video or in any of my subsequent posts. Um, really, things have kind of come to a head in the last 48 hours. Um I was contacted by uh, Delegate Faircloth personally in a PM. He admitted that he had not watched my entire video, but he was upset with the fact that I hadn't come to him first to address some of these issues. Uh, quite frankly, I never really, I don't know, I mean, maybe it's naive of me, but I never really expected that he'd see it anyway. Um, I'm glad that he did. I hope that he was able to take, you know, some things away from it. Um, but of course, that's kind of put a big target on my forehead for, you know, a lot of his followers. And I've had to um, kind of hold my own <laughs> in the last 40 hours, which is fine. You know, I knew when I posted that video, there were going to, you know, people were going to have things to say about it. So I put on my big girl panties and I waited. Um, and I have not been afraid to, um, you know, engage with people and sort of clarify my position on things. Um, to spare Delegate Faircloth some, some effort, because I'm sure he is furiously Googling away to see who the hell I am, um, I'll answer that for all of you. I am not really a big deal in the industry. We do not own, it, you know, this huge e-liquid company. We're not rich. We don't come from powerful families. Um, we are pretty simple people. Um, you know, we... We got into this industry really because of our own personal experiences. We both wanted to quit smoking. Cancer has run rampant in our families. Um, we've lost family members to cancer, um, you know, that's been directly linked to their use of traditional tobacco. Um, and we needed, we were looking for a means to quit smoking, but it's very difficult to do so when you enjoy the act of smoking, which we both did. So vaping was, you know, kind of answered our prayers and, and gave us an alternative that um, worked for us and that we enjoyed. Um, and so we never really looked back. We started making e-liquid for ourselves and um, kind of overnight it turned into this business that we never expected. Chris um, was working for the government. He was an army, um, he was in the army for several years, served abroad in Korea, um, and then he came back and, and started working in, you know, homeland security for the government. And I spent about 10 years, maybe a little more, 
um, working for catering companies doing event and wedding planning and it was something that I really enjoyed and I was really good at um, but and we were and we were doing both for a very long time um, until Bumble, Bumblebee grew to the point where we were gonna we had to make a decision we couldn't continue to do both anymore um, and obviously we chose Bumblebee we but we've never you know we've been what we deem successful it may not be what others in the industry deem successful we're not as big as as some of the big big companies um you know we've we've always kind of been pretty small um which is totally fine with us um i don't ever want to get so big to the point where we can't personally interact with our customers where we don't know who our customers are where you know i can't personally engage and work with our shops um you know being a smaller company is is something that's greatly benefited me and chris we may not be um the cool kids in school <laughs> um we may not ever be rich um and that's okay. That's totally okay with us. We've never had that like big, super hyped flavor or anything like that, but we do consistently put out um, quality products that we stand behind. So that's good enough for us. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're not... We're, we're average people. We are very much like the average vapor. Um, and so that's why when all of um, the stuff about Faircloth kind of honestly fell into my lap it was on my news feed I did some research we've since been doing more research and the more information I find the more disturbed that I am and so I felt a huge responsibility to share this with everybody else um, I knew that I was probably going to come under fire a little bit for it and that's cool it's fine it's to be expected everybody is entitled to their own opinion and and I totally appreciate and embrace that if anything I, I would rather that people are talking about it and have something to say and we can have an honest dialogue about it um, you know than people just you know, holding their tongues or skipping past it or, or whatever. Um, I think like overnight my views on this, on the last video had doubled. And I mean, still, we're not talking about like thousands of views, not even close, dude. But um, enough people have watched that I am at least satisfied with the fact that I've kind of done my job. I've put the facts out there. Um, so... Anyway, to kind of summarize the last, like, really 24 hours, um, Delegate Faircloth did contact me personally via Facebook PM. We had a pretty brief conversation, and most of it actually ended up playing out in a public forum on the Not Blowing Smoke group page. Um, and thankfully, Stefan was gracious enough <laughs> to allow this post to kind of take over the group. Uh, for the last 24 hours, we're kind of, posts have still been exchanged today quite a bit. Um, but, you know, Faircloth and I did exchange a couple of, um, not posts, but, you know, we had, we had a brief exchange. Um, he... He said that, you know, he wished that I had come to him personally to address a lot of these issues, but, you know, I did ask these questions. When he did his live feed, I asked a couple of questions and they went unanswered. He said that, and he even said it live on the air, um, you know, when he didn't answer the first question or two that I posted, I said, okay, you know, and he was wrapping up to go off camera. I said, okay, well, you know, we have questions. When can we ask you questions? And he said, well, you know, post them and I'll get back to you. And he never did. Um, that has since, you know, that pattern has since continued. I posed a series of questions in my PM to him. He did not respond to them. Um, and then another gentleman uh, in the not blowing smoke group did ask a bunch of questions and his questions, you know, as of this moment still have gone unanswered. So, you know, I, that definitely makes me even more concerned now that, you know, 
he's on that thread, he's getting tagged when we make posts, he's not responding. He's blatantly ignoring the questions of these people that he supposedly cares about. His, I mean, I guess not all of us are his constituents because we're not all in West Virginia, but nonetheless, you know, he's pledged to lead this fight and, and you know, he's, he's promised transparency and, and that's not happening. Um, he did liken his legal strategy to like football plays that you're not going to put out there um, your future plans and, you know, alert the other, the opposing team as you would in football. Totally get that. Totally appreciate that. Um, but there have been questions that have nothing to do with the legal strategy. For instance, you know, how is the money going to be handled and, and treated going forward? What's happening with the deposits um, that people are putting down or the payments that people are putting down for this um, campaign? Um, other people have also spoken out and said, and, and I said in my last video, 100 k that he's listed as his uh, budget, you know, that's not going to be anywhere near enough to fund this kind of a legal battle that he is saying he's, you know, pursuing. So, um, you know, there's there's just a lot of questions and, and not enough information. Um, he did ask for my personal phone number so that he could contact me and explain things to me. And um, I responded with the phone numbers to Kasa and Safada. Not, I mean, I'll admit at that point I was pretty frustrated, but I also um, wasn't trying to be a complete smartass. It's just that, you know, you don't need to be, you know, explaining these things to me because at this point, you know, honestly, I've got a full plate. I'm doing these blogs. I am running our business and I'm also, um, you know, putting together our Virginia chapter for Safada. So my plea is super, super full. Um, and I did not mean to kind of take him on and, and create this, you know, huge shitstorm in the industry or anything like that. Um, I have been accused of trying to create a divide and creating drama at a time when we should all be uniting together and this whole like you know vapors united it thing is Faircloth's favorite thing to say um if that were the case if he were truly truly interested in uniting vapors he would be collaborating with uh the big you know, advocacy organizations. And he said that he has them all on speed dial and he's talking to them. However, I have it on good authority that he is not cooperating with them. If he was cooperating with them, he would not need his own legal strategy. He would not need his own law firm. He would not need to be, you know, fundraising for, for this separate, you know, fund that he has supposedly established that we have no details about. Um, you know, so so clearly he is not collaborating with them. I mean, all the big organizations are all working together. He is not. And he refuses to answer why he is not working with them. Um, you know, so how much do you really believe in unity, sir, if you are not uniting with everybody else? Um, these organizations have been around for a very long time. Um, and they've been preparing for this for a very long time. Um, they've been, you know, networking, building relationships, strengthening their case. They are better prepared than someone who just came on the scene right when the regulations were released. Um, there's also, I mean, we've also been doing even more research in the last couple of days. Um, Delegate Faircloth, in his, you know, two terms in the West Virginia House, has failed to pass a single bill that he has supported. Um, the West Virginia ban on vaping, yes, he was, you know, physically there. He did speak out, certainly, but... That bill, he didn't defeat that bill because that bill wasn't going to pass regardless of whether he was there or not. There weren't 
there just weren't the votes to support it. I don't know if he was doing any sort of, um, you know, lobbying behind the scenes or, or whatever. I certainly can't speak to that. And it's very possible that he did. But the credit that, you know, he wants to take for, for defeating this bill, well, he was going to be defeated anyway. Um, so that's, I mean, I, and I guess that's politicians speak, you know, politicians are a dime a dozen. They all have the same strategy. They're all trained to, to, you know, make themselves look, you know, as good as they can and, and whatever it is, you know, to each his own. It's, that's their thing. Um, I just, it just hurts me personally to see people giving their hard earned money to someone who may not at the end of the day deserve it. Um, this gentleman is leaving office in the end of November and when he goes, you know, what does that mean? Um, I've, I've heard that he is looking for a lobbyist position with, with any organization that's going to hire him. Um, and that's kind of his plans after he loses his, uh, seat. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I can't confirm that it's at this point just sort of, you know, hearsay or, or whatever. Um, but what happens, what happens to everybody's money after that? You know, I mean, it'll be spent on a campaign that, that what may or may not be pursued. I just, I really think that, um, you know, I mean, Chris and I are normal people. We are your average vapor. We happen to own a business. Um, you know, but we we enjoy vaping and, and we put our money where our mouth is too. And I just, it, it personally hurts me to see, you know, people putting their hard-earned dollars into, and, and worse, their, their faith and their hope into someone that may very well jump ship um, if the going gets tough or it doesn't benefit him anymore. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say on the issue. You guys can totally, I mean, there's interviews that he's done where he said some pretty disappointing things. Um, I've since been able to uncover what the, the, naming, the, the meaning of Larry's throat punch is and kind of how that came about. It's, again, not a professional background to a to a unprofessional name but I digress um it is up to you guys you guys it's your money it's your life it's your vote you do what you need to do and I totally appreciate and respect your right to do what you need to do I'm not here to influence your decision I'm just putting my opinion and you know, the facts that I found out there so that you can make a well-informed decision of what you want to do moving forward. Um, I will be moving on <laughs> after this video um, and we'll get back to all the other things because there are other things that have taken place this week that, um, you know, we haven't really been able to adjust here because we've been sidetracked with this whole fair cloth issue. So going forward, we will be looking into all of that. The good news, though, is that um, through, through the last couple of days, I've actually been able to establish a lot of new relationships with um, some pretty awesome people. I've been able to get in contact with a lot of the people who are, you know, heavily involved at um, you know, the higher levels of advocacy who are working, you know, day and night, quite literally. I talked to a gentleman the other day who is, you know, having 20 hour days. He never sees his wife. He pretty much spends his life traveling. Um, and you know, God bless him. Um, God bless everybody who is working so hard to fight for all of us. They are, you know, Greg Conley's in the media every time we turn around. That poor man is probably living out of his suitcase, and I know that he is not sleeping well at all because he's just 
constantly on the go. So, you know, these are the people that really need our support. These are the people that we need to back unconditionally because they are sacrificing everything to, to fight for us. Um, and they will have my undying gratitude forever um, for their efforts. So anyway, I'm not going to say that I will never talk about Faircloth again as long as he is on the public stage, as long as he is continuing to involve himself in this. I'm sure he's going to come up, you know, as things uh, develop. Um, and I will report on him just as I report on everything else going on in the industry. If you guys have any questions, you can always contact me. I'm happy to discuss this with anyone. I'm happy to discuss anything with anyone. I'm pretty much an open book. So, um, that being said, I really appreciate you guys hearing me out. I really appreciate you watching. Um, if there's, again, any any questions or any topics that I haven't covered that you would like me to cover and look into, let me know. Um, but again, I'm just really, really appreciative of um, all the support and all the views. You guys are fantastic. Let's keep fighting the good fight. Let's remain you know, hopeful, optimistic, Together, we can do this. We can make a difference. Um, I love you guys. I hope you have an amazing weekend, and I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.